Mysore Chakras, episode 136. The journey is the destination. The seven chakras, swirling vortices of energy, positioned throughout our body from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. For thousands of years, this ancient wisdom has been passed on from master to disciple. What are the functions of these energy centers? And could these chakras help you unlock your destiny and find your true purpose? Welcome to My 7 Chakras. And now, your host, Aditya Jai Kumar. What's up, Action Taker? AJ here, founder and host of My 7 Chakras, your go-to resource to learn about ideas, concepts, principles, phenomena, and stories that will put you in a state of wonder and happiness because you get to feel the power of possibility. This is the show where we believe that inspiration is for everyone and that challenges are here to serve you and provide you lessons that will help you evolve. Action Tribe, before we begin today's episode, we're going to do a little gratefulness exercise. You see, gratefulness is contagious. We're going through challenges in society today, but I strongly believe that gratefulness and love can solve even the biggest of obstacles. So what I want you to do is tell me what is that one thing or that one person you are grateful for today? That's right. What is that one thing or one person that you're grateful for today? So whether you're on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, post your gratefulness message using the hashtag my seven chakras. Tag your friends and family if you like and let the world know. Let the world get to feel your gratefulness. And with that, we are now ready to welcome our featured guest for today, Dr. Michelle Summers Cologne. So, Dr. Michelle, are you ready to inspire? I am ready to get grounded and inspire. Awesome. So, a physician, surgeon, health coach, yoga teacher, anatomy instructor, author, and overall health and wellness expert, Dr. Michelle Summers Cologne is known as the holistic podiatrist of Southern California and has been interviewed and quoted in many prominent publications, including USA Today, US News and World Reports, Health Magazine, Yahoo Makers, and Bloomberg Business Week. One of Dr. Michelle's greatest strengths is her ability to help women create balanced, healthy lives by looking at the whole picture. Dr. Michelle combines the best of Eastern and Western medicine to create individualized health and wellness plans for her clients. For almost two decades, Dr. Michelle has dedicated herself to maintaining a private medical practice and providing exceptional care to her patients while at the same time studying holistic medicine, Ayurveda, yoga, Reiki, reflexology and acupressure. Dr. Michelle believes that food is medicine and that yoga, Ayurveda, Veda and meditation are the keys to perfect health. So Dr. Michelle, I've given our listeners an intro, but take about a minute and tell us a bit more about yourself. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. One of the things that I love to do with my patients and my clients is to help them learn how to heal themselves. And so that's what my passion is. And I love using yoga and Ayurveda and meditation to teach them how to do that because that's what helped me get healthy. And I know that they can do that for themselves if someone guides them and teaches them a little bit. That's wonderful. So Dr. Michelle, let's begin today's episode like we always do with a dose of inspiration. So tell me what is your favorite inspirational quote and also how do you apply this particular quote in your life? My favorite quote is the journey is the destination because sometimes we get so caught up in getting the next thing or making our next goal or getting our next degree, whatever it is that we're not really enjoying the process and the journey that we're going through. And so I like to use this, remind myself and remind my my friends and family that, you know, to enjoy the moment, to be present in the moment and to enjoy the journey because that's really what we have. I think that's an amazing quote. The journey is the destination. Action Tribe, sometimes subconsciously we're always thinking about the future maybe six months down the line one year two years five years or ten years down the line and this quote really reminds you to think big but to come to the here and now because this particular step that you're taking right now this is the destination and when you realize that your perspective changes thanks a lot for reminding us you're welcome and with that let's dive in so firstly i love your website thank you on your website you have numerous free guides on yoga meditation plant-based diets in one of your guides you talk about seven reasons why yoga is better than medicine so could you share some of those reasons yoga is better than medicine for so many things um one of the things that yoga helps you with is breathing and when you take medication you're just you know, taking a pill, not really thinking about what you're doing. And with yoga, you're actually pause, you breathe, you take the next step, you make the next movement. Everything is very intentional. So breathing and being intentional and slowing down, those are just some of the things that 
we do with yoga that we're not doing when we're just popping pills and <laughs> taking medications. So I love that you spoke about the importance of pausing, breathing and being more intentional. I think a combination of those three things itself creates such a difference. And during many of the yoga sessions that I've been through, the instructors always mention this one thing that even if you don't know how to do these poses or you find it really difficult, if you're able to just master your breathing and become more conscious of your breathing on a day-to-day -day basis, you're definitely benefiting a lot. Is that correct? That's correct. Wonderful. Now, I'm sure you agree that energy is everything. As you state on your website, many people are dedicated to transforming their lives. They work so hard that they're exhausted at the end of the day and then they are left with no energy or motivation. And with no energy or motivation, I'm sure getting things done is also really impossible. So what are some of the reasons why there is a sudden loss of energy, especially after work in the evenings? Well, I think it might sound really simple, but I think that people are not not getting enough sleep for one. They're staying up too late to try to get things done and then getting up early and starting their day right away, jumping out of bed. They're not taking a moment to set their intention for the day do a short meditation practice, a gratitude practice in the morning to set themselves up to have an easy day. And when you do those little things in the morning, you have so much more energy throughout the day. Mm. Exercising in the morning is another thing that helps you build your energy for the day. And when you do all these things in the morning, you have to look at the night before. So if you're not going to bed early enough, if you're not unplugging early enough the night before, if you're staying up too late trying to get things done, you're going to go to bed with your mind racing. So you really have to think about everything you're doing the night before to set yourself up for the following day to have energy and to feel good and to be motivated. So I love that you spoke about the importance of having like a morning routine because how you start your day and the experiences you have early on really determine how your day goes. And you also spoke about uh, the importance of sleep. Now, my question is for someone who is committed to taking action, someone who is committed to working hard and transforming their life, the topic of sleep can sometimes be a confusing one. On one hand, there are some people who believe that less sleep means more productivity and sometimes people are to sleep less, hashtag no sleep. Mm -hmm. And then there are those people who say that it's not the quantity of sleep, but the quality of sleep that matters. So help us clear the fog here a bit. What is more important, quality or quantity or both? Really, it's both. In Ayurveda, we talk about going to sleep and being in rhythm with the cycles of nature. And there's certain times with the Ayurvedic clock that is the optimal time to fall asleep and the optimal time to wake up. And having that eight hours of sleep, uninterrupted, solid, restful sleep. What happens is when you have that, that solid eight hours of sleep, while you're sleeping, your body is doing all of the things it needs to do. It's repairing damaged cells. It's repairing things in your digestive system. It's doing all the things that you don't know it's doing because you don't need to know about it. You just need to be asleep and your body is so wise. That's why I love calling my, my book that's coming out Body Wisdom because your body is so wise. It knows what to do, but you have to cooperate with it and you have to give it the rest it needs. And so if we go to bed, 10 o'clock is in line with the, with the um, Ayurvedic clock, the nature clock. If you go to bed at 10 o'clock and you get up at six o'clock and you get those eight hours of sleep, you're going to be in rhythm with nature, in rhythm with your body and allowing your body to do all those things so that you can be more productive that day. Even though a lot of people want to be proud of sleeping less, they're actually doing their body damage in the long run. They might not feel it right now. Some of them do. Some of them might not feel it till later down the road when they're exhausted because they've been going on sleep deprivation for too long. So I love that you spoke about the cycles of nature. And when we align ourselves with nature, we're able to get that optimum level of rest, especially if we sleep at maybe 10 p.m., which, uh, as you mentioned, is a good time to sleep and get those eight hours of sleep because to us it's just like rest but as you mentioned so rightly there's so much going on in our body during those eight hours cell repair hormonal balance and other stuff which contributes to our health and wellness now for someone who's having a hard time getting quality sleep and rest at night are there any tips or advice that you can share that can help our listeners get better sleep yeah just like i have a morning routine i have a nighttime routine and i use hmm. this with all of my patients and, and um, um, clients as well. You have to, if you're planning on going to bed at 10 o'clock, you have to start shutting down at nine o'clock. And I know for a lot of people that like to be up doing things late on their computer, it sounds like a foreign subject to them. But 
I have them do it in baby steps. So let's say, for example, someone is going to bed at midnight. They're not going to be able to change their bedtime from midnight to 10 in one day. They're just going to lay lay there awake because their body's not ready to sleep because it's used to going to bed at midnight. So I have them do it in small increments. So let's say tonight they're going to go to bed at 11.45 and maybe they're going to do that for a week. And then the next week, 11.30. And so they're gradually bringing their bedtime down closer to that 10 o'clock hour. And while they're doing that, they have to start unplugging earlier too because you want to unplug an hour before before you go to bed so that all of that white light and blue light that's coming off of your computer is not affecting your brain waves, making your brain too excited when you try to go to sleep. So that's the first thing. The other thing is just having nighttime rituals like oil massaging your feet before you go to bed. And it, it can only be 30 seconds that you massage your feet, but that 30 seconds goes a long way. Also taking a bath, um, drinking warm herbal tea, and it's things that we've all heard before. Oh yeah, it's nice to take a bubble bath before bed, but people aren't doing it. So we have to remind them. Doing this little group of things actually helps you get deeper sleep, more restful sleep. And if you can do it on a routine basis, you're going to have better sleep. I think some really amazing insight and advice right there. If you intend to sleep at 10, start sh- shutting down at nine. And I love that you mentioned that taking small steps is the best way to making this big change, which is a big change truly for people, especially who might be sleeping at about 12.30 a.m. right now. You mentioned starting small with 15 minutes at a time. So over a period of one week, over a period of two weeks, you'll be able to get closer to the 10 p.m. deadline. And I love that you spoke about unplugging one hour ahead because it takes time, right? It takes time to shut off your lights, plug off the computer, maybe leave your cell phone in the other room so that you don't have any electronics in in your bedroom and the oil massaging your feet is something that i haven't heard before but it's pretty interesting so is it uh, the therapeutic effect that the oil has on your feet or is it just the practice it makes you feel better it's actually both and if you can actually oil massage your whole body it's even better but for someone that's you know building a new habit and maybe that seems like too big of a a task, just your feet is fine. But the the process of oil massaging your body is called Abhayanga. And in Ayurveda, it's one of the practices that we spend a lot of time teaching because there's so many health benefits to massaging your body. In terms of your feet, um, it's one of the things with Abhayanga that gives you deep relaxation. And so there's even certain types of oils you could use that give you better relaxation. You can add even some essential oils like lavender, which is very relaxing. Mm. Uh, Sometimes you see it in bubble bath, lavender flavor, you know, scented. It's there because it actually helps people sleep. So if you can add that to your oil, um, sesame oil is very warming. So in the winter, you want to use something warming like sesame oil and add a little bit of lavender to it. That's going to give you a nice relaxation on your feet, which is going to help you go to sleep. Beautiful. Now, moving on, what inspired you to start the Body Wisdom Coaching Program? Really, what inspired me was I had my own health crisis a few years ago. Well, several years ago, and I was going to specialists, going to different doctors, and I was not getting better. And that's when I turned to Ayurveda. Um, It helped me learn the right foods to eat for my body, the right type of foods that's going to make me feel good because I was having a lot of upset stomach, a lot of pain, a lot of bloating, all these things that were very painful and distressing to me, but also keeping me awake at night. And so it also was affecting my sleep. So it goes, you could see how one thing leads to the other ends up causing you to, Mm. you know, feel bad and, and tired all the time. And so once I found out that I was eating wrong for my body and I started learning the techniques of Ayurveda and the right foods for myself, I realized that, you know, I could have been just taking medications that my doctors were giving me for years and never knew what the real root of the problem was. Now that I know it, I think I need to teach this and I need to start with my patients who are suffering with this or that. And I started learning more and taking classes and deciding that I'm going to teach this program to people who are struggling with some of the same things I was struggling with. So it seems like Ayurveda at that point had become the go-to resource for you in terms of what to eat and when to eat because we really are what we eat, right? That's right. Now, I know that the Body Wisdom Coaching Program is 10 weeks long. Could you walk us through what really happens during those 10 weeks? Yeah, so what I do is um, each week of the 10 weeks, we focus on one healthy habit that we're going to start working on. So for example, one week, we're going to work on sleep. We're going to start doing some of the things that you and I were talking about. One week, we're going to focus on food. One week, we're going to focus on meditation. And so we start changing our daily habits little by little. And we use baby steps with each one. Like I was talking about with sleep, we're going to do the same thing with food. Now, 
you mentioned eating at the right times. That's a very mm. important part of the food program. So knowing the right times to eat, the right time of day, being in rhythm again with nature and eating when the times are recommended with the clock. Those kinds of things we start learning and we start working on them little by little, making small changes until they become a daily habit. And we do that with 10 different habits throughout the 10 weeks. By the end of the program, people start making those changes and make them into a habit so they start feeling better. Wonderful. So you mentioned one health habit per week. That sounds really fun. And uh, is there a community aspect to this as well? Yeah, we do. We have, uh, well, we do live calls every week. And we mm. also have a community group that we can talk to and ask questions during the week in between the calls and have a close-knit group in there. So there you go, Action Tribe. You are the sum average of the people that you hang out with. Making a change can be really challenging sometimes. But here, what is happening is there's one new health habit per week. So it's not like all the changes are crammed into a given period of time. You get a week to try out new ideas and experiment or practice for yourself. And most importantly, you're not alone because there's a community around you, people just like you making a shift in their mind and trying out new practices for the benefit of themselves as well as the people around them. So Michelle, based on what we've discussed today, is there a health tip that you would encourage our listeners to try out? I think the first thing really is the sleep one really working on getting that sleep because when they get that sleep really dialed in and really under control, that's going to start giving them the energy and the motivation for everything else. And along with the sleep uh, that we already went into a lot of details with that, but eating dinner earlier, because if you eat dinner late, mm -hmm. so this is one real actionable tip. You want to eat four hours before bed. So people that are eating dinner at seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, which a lot of people do, then they're, it's affecting their sleep. And what's happening is instead of their body doing all of that repair that it's supposed to do, yeah. it's spending all of its energy digesting your food. So you wake up feeling groggy in the morning. You wake up feeling tired. You wake up feeling heavy. Sure. So if you can just start moving your dinner back earlier, like five or six o'clock, that's going to help you sleep so much better. So what happens once in a while, let's say a person goes for a movie or a late night out, comes back at about you know, 10, 30, 11, and then decides to eat. Is it better in that case to eat something or to just skip it and have breakfast instead? At that hour, it's probably better to skip it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Try to eat before the movie, you know, before all those activities so that they're, all their food's digested before they go to bed. Of course, if it's a once in a while thing, it's not going to, you know, really affect you that much. It just might affect you that next day for that one day. But if it's something that's happening all the time, it's going to start showing its, its effects. Action Drive to access the show notes for today's episode, visit my 7 chakras.com forward slash 136. That's my 7 chakras.com forward slash 136. There are no great people in the world, only great challenges which ordinary people rise to meet. This is a powerful quote by William Frederick Halsey Jr. Action Tribe, no one is born with greatness. Greatness is created with practice. Greatness is earned. Greatness is manifested. And this greatness usually comes after moments of trial, despair and challenge. When things look bleak and people around have given up, an ordinary person who no one would expect looks at a challenge and says, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? Because as we learned, it is ordinary people who rise to meet great challenges. So Dr. Michelle, take us back to a time when you faced a major challenge. Tell us how you came across that challenge in the first place. And finally, how did you overcome it? Well, I already mentioned one of my challenges, my digestive challenge. I had another challenge that was really affecting my life a lot, and that was insomnia. I was not able to fall asleep. I was laying in bed for hours. The only way that I cured myself from the insomnia was meditation. And what I started doing was using guided meditations. I started listening to guided meditations before bed, while I'm laying in bed. And I found one that I really resonated with. I really liked, I really loved the sound of his voice. And it was an eight minute guided meditation. And I would listen to it every single night for probably two or three months. And the funny thing was I never got to the end of the meditation. So I fell asleep before that eight minute block ended every single time. So to me, that was a big success. I was so excited because I wasn't laying in bed for hours anymore. And then it got to the point where I didn't need to listen to it anymore. I could just lay down and I could remember what he would say. And I would just kind of go through it in my own mind. And then eventually it got to the point where I didn't need to do that anymore. And I could just lay down and go to sleep. So I love telling people about guided meditations because it helped me so much with 
my insomnia. It also helped me with uh, my fear of flying because I would get very nervous on the plane. And it also mm. is really good for people who are trying to meditate, but they always, but they say, I can't meditate. My mind races. Sure. I'm one of those people that can't meditate. And then I tell them about this and they try it and then they get so excited. I actually can do it. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that was my big challenge because I had insomnia for years. I really did. And just within a couple months time, it was cured. Wonderful. Is there a way that you could share which guided meditation that is for the benefit of our listeners? Yeah, I got it on an app that someone told me about called Omvana. So it's O-M-V-A-N-A. It's a free app. And on that app, there's a lot of guided meditations. There's free ones and some that you pay for. And so this was one of the free ones and it was by Bob Proctor. And I don't remember the name of it, but it, it's on that app and it's about eight minutes. Love that. So if you had to summarize a major life lesson based on the story that you just shared, what would that be? I would say, first of all, listen to your body. Listen to your body's cues. When you're tired, go to bed. Sometimes I would be tired, but I would try to stay up late doing things like we talked about earlier. And then now my mind is racing. So listen to the cues that your body's giving you. If you're, some people, they notice they're they're too tired when their legs start hurting or their feet start aching or they're starting to get a headache because they're trying to do too much. So listen to your body's cues. And when you're tired, go to bed, get enough sleep because when you don't, we already know what happens the next day. You don't have energy. So that's what I would say. So firstly, thanks a lot for sharing this story with us. You shared that you had insomnia for many years together and so many of our listeners face this challenge. People have sent me emails and over social as well because sleep is a challenge. You know, as you mentioned, it's not just important how much sleep you get, but at what time you sleep, because it's all about those functions that happen during those eight hours of sleep that really make a difference. You mentioned that you would lay in bed for hours and, you know, uh, you weren't really able to sleep until you found the guided meditation because that was your solution. You started doing them every night for three months. And the beautiful thing is it became internalized. After a certain point, you would fall asleep even before you got better at the practice and now you help and teach others as well. I think that is really inspiring and phenomenal. Just knowing that a condition or the challenge that you had for so many years got solved in a matter of months. So it was that shift that happened within you thanks to the power of meditation and guided meditation. And I'm sure a lot of our listeners would be able to really take this advice and put it into action. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Welcome. Action Tribe, as you head out towards taking massive action, there will be moments when you stumble upon challenges. Challenges that come out when least expected. There will be situations that catch you off guard. There will be also events that don't turn out the way you thought they would. When such a moment occurs, remember, it's alright. Don't criticize yourself. Don't assume that this challenge is in your life at random. There is meaning in the universe, but sometimes we might not have an immediate answer. During these moments, ask yourself... What is the universe trying to tell me through this? What does the universe want to teach me about life? What can I learn from this experience? Because as Eckhart Tolle once so eloquently exclaimed, life will give you whatever experience is most helpful for the evolution of your consciousness. So Dr. Michelle, what is your life calling at this very moment? My life calling is to teach people how to heal themselves. That I think that's it. Because I could heal them with my medical training, yeah. but I think my true calling is to teach them how to heal themselves. So I love that you not only want to heal them, but you want to go up and beyond that. You want them to be able to heal themselves and activate the natural healing power of their bodies. Is that correct? That's right. Wonderful. So moving on, was there ever a magical moment or a eureka moment beyond which your life would never be the same again? A transitional point, I would say. I think for me, which I already mentioned it before, was when I learned how to heal myself through foods because I was suffering for a long time and in a lot of pain. And when I realized what I was doing wrong and what I could do better, it really did change my life because it brought me to yoga it brought me to a place where I can learn how to teach people how to heal themselves. And it brought me out of pain and into enjoying my life again, because I was very miserable for a long time. And I think that it really did change my life in so many different ways that sometimes don't even remember how much I suffered because my life is so much different now. I think that's really inspiring. Thanks a lot for sharing those insights and your story. And with that, we finally arrived at the grand finale. The Wisdom Round. A round that contains four rapid-fire questions.
Are you ready? I'm ready. So what is the best advice that someone's ever given you? Just to go for it, to go for your dreams. And could you name a personal habit that you'd like to encourage our listeners to try? I think it's setting your intention in the morning when you wake up before you get up and start rushing around. Set your intention for the day that you're going to have an easy day, a happy day and a positive day and picture your day going about in a positive way before you get up and start getting ready. Now this beautifully transitions into my next question which is what is your morning ritual like? Your morning routine? My morning routine, I get up at dawn around 6:00. I set my intention for the day before I get up out of bed. I do a short meditation, maybe three to five minutes. I hydrate, I drink my water, and then I exercise in the morning for 20 minutes, which was not always the case. I had to build up to it from five minutes, gradually up to 20 minutes. Then I have my breakfast and then I get ready for my day. Wonderful. So name a book that you'd like to recommend for our listeners today. A book that I love is called The Slight Edge and it talks about making changes in your life in small increments and it goes into different areas of your life. So uh, the reason I liked it is because it talked about work, family, physical uh, exercise, spirituality. It talked about all different areas of your life and how you can make small changes. Action Tribe as shared earlier to access today's show notes. Visit my7chakras.com forward slash 136. That's my7chakras.com forward slash 136. So Dr. Michelle, thank you so much for coming on our show today. It was a phenomenal experience chatting with you. Before you go, tell us one thing that you are grateful for and how do we find you online? One thing I'm grateful for is is my relationship with my daughter because she's a teenager and we all know how that can be challenging and I feel like the changes that I made in my life she's following by example and she's learning how to make those changes at an early age which allows us to have a very smooth mother daughter relationship during these difficult years and how do we find you online You can find me online on my website drmichelle.com and that michelle with one l so d r m i c h e l e.com Awesome thanks a lot for sharing that we will have this link up in the show notes so Dr Michelle thank you so much for coming on our show reminding us about the importance of balance and taking us one step closer to a human revolution Thank you I really enjoyed it and I hope that your listeners got some value from it listening to my seven chakras go to my s e v e n chakras.com download your free gift get inspired and take action transform your life today